Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Jeskai control deck that's featuring some of these expensive dual face cards that we can either play as lands or sorceries, and one of the centerpieces of the deck is Undo Inversion, an 8 mana rare sorcery saying destroy all non-land permanents, but we can also play it as a tap land instead. So how do we build around an 8 mana sorcery that destroys all non-land permanents? Well, there's a few cards that synergize quite nicely with it, and one of them is Skyclave Relic, a 3 mana artifact that's indestructible, and we can tap it to add 1 mana of any color to our mana pool, so helps us ramp and fix our mana, and we can also play Skyclave Relic Kicked, in which case we get to make 2 tokens that are copies of Skyclave Relic that enter the battlefield tapped, so a nice way to generate a lot of mana, and our deck has some expensive spells as you can see here with cards like Ondo Inversion, Seagate Rest Restoration, a Myriad Skull in the mana base that we wouldn't mind casting, so the Skyclave Relic fits in perfectly. And then another card that's great in the deck is Narset of the Ancient Way, a 4 mana Planeswalker, starts out at 4 loyalty, the plus 1 gains to a life and adds 1 mana of blue, red or white to our mana pool that we can spend on non-creature spells, and then the minus 2 says draw a card, and then we may discard a card, and when we discard a non-land card this way, Narset deals damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to target creature or Planeswalker, and even though some of these dual face cards are also lanes, they still count as sorceries on their front half, so they still deal damage equal to their total converted mana cost with Narset's minus 2 ability, so we can deal a ton of damage to a creature or planeswalker, and then a minus 6 gives us an emblem, saying whenever we cast a non-creature spell, the emblem deals 2 damage to any target, so a nice way to close out the game as well. So that's the main idea, this is a Jeskai control deck taking advantage of the expensive dual face cards. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, at 1 mana we've got 3 copies of Opt as an instant that lets us scry 1 and then draw a card, and the reason I like Opt in this deck is because we're playing Skyclave Relic, so on turn 3 we can play the Relic and then still tap the Relic for mana to potentially cast a 1 mana instant like Opt, and the same goes for the 3 copies of Mystical Dispute, which is going to be great against any blue deck, making it only cost a single blue mana to counter target spell unless its controller pays 3, so once again we can play the Relic and potentially keep up Mystical Dispute afterwards, and then in other matchups it's still a 3 mana counter spell that's a little bit easier to cast than the double blue counter spells like Neutralize. Then at 2 mana we also have the full playset of Scorching Dragonfire, dealing 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker, also exiling it, so this is great against any decks relying on graveyard recursion. And then 2 copies of Into the Royal, which we can cast for 2 mana, returning target non-land permanents to its owner's hand, but we can also cast it with the additional kicker cost of 1 on a blue, in which case we also get to draw a card. And then at 3 mana we've got our 3 copies of Dispute for copies of Skyclave Relic, and then we don't mind having a full playset of Narset of the Ancient Way, since we can always discard additional copies to the minus 2 ability, and then Shatter the Sky is our sweeper of choice, also a 4 of. And then moving up the curve we've got 2 copies of Elspeth Conquers Death, which can exile target permanent an opponent controls with converted mana cost 3 or greater, on the second chapter makes non-creature spells the opponent cast more expensive, and on the final chapter we can return a creature or planeswalker from the graveyard to the battlefield, so also has great synergy with Narset. And then uh, topping off our curve, we've got 4 copies of Shark Typhoon, which we're not often going to cast as a 6 man enchantment, instead it's great to just cycle it for X1 on a blue, making an XX blue shark creature token, and also drawing a card, so that's also a great mana sync to combine with the extra mana from Skyclave Relic. And then 2 copies of Inspired Ultimatum, it is a little bit tricky to cast, since it's double blue, triple red, and double white, and red isn't really the primary color of the deck, but that's also where the mana fixing from Skyclave Relic comes in handy, and we do have quite a few dual lands in the deck as well to help us out, and then we get to target a player, which gains 5 life, Inspired Ultimatum deals 5 damage to any target, and then we get to draw 5 cards, so very powerful sorcery indeed. And then taking a look at some of the dual face cards, besides our 3 copies of Ondo Inversion, we also have 2 copies of Seagate Restoration, letting us draw cards equal to the number of cards in our hand, plus 1, and then we have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. And we also have 3 copies of Emiria Skull, which can act as an additional win condition, creating 2 4 4 white Angel Warrior creature tokens with flying, and non-Angel creatures we control gain indestructible until our next turn. And then taking a look at the rest of the mana base, we've got 1 Plains, 2 Islands, 1 Mountain, 4 Temple of Enlightenment coming into play tapped letting us scry 1, and then 4 of the Blue Red Pathway, and 4 of the Red White Pathway, and then 4 of the Rogrin Triome which we can also cycle for 3 mana. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see what the deck does.
All right, we're on the draw with the keepable hand. So which land do we want to play first? Don't need to opt turn one since we can play it after we play Relic. Probably start with, I guess, the Temple of Enlightenment because I do want to find more lands here. Got to bottom the ultimatum, sadly. Scavenging ooze, that's fine. So against the green deck, I might want to hang on to Ondo Inversion. I do have double Relic to ramp into it. So maybe I just play Emiria tapped here. And then I could opt now, I could opt next turn after playing Relic. Trail of Crumbs, typically very good against control decks since it's difficult to get rid of enchantment, doesn't get dealt with by Elspeth Conqueror's death. So another reason to hold on to Inversion. I guess Dragonfire's okay, deals with the Ooze. But I can just minus Narset to get rid of it. And I've got a Shatter, so I would rather just find more lands. I'm just gonna sack a food token and go digging with the trail, presumably. I can play Narsets. I could play more relics to start ramping. Can even play double relic. Kind of like double relic here. And next turn with an untapped land, I could already play Ondo Inversion. But I'm probably going to wait an extra turn. Alright, Wicked Wolf. But without food. So now is a good time to cast my Shatter. And then... We'll probably play Triumph Tapped. Opponent also passes. And then I guess we can just plus. Work our way up towards an ultimate. And keep up kicked into the royal. Feasting Troll King. Gonna make a bunch of food. Can also be dealt with with the inversion. For now, probably just bounce the Troll King. And then I need to survive one more turn before I can ultimate. Enlightenment begins within. Yeah, that sounds good. Ultimates. Cast on the inversion. Get rid of the opponent's food supply. And then next turn we can start cycling Shark Typhoon. And I'll take another Shark Typhoon. And I believe this is for eight. Double tap Q to float all our mana, just to double check. Let's 
sadly, cycling Shark Typhoon doesn't trigger Narset's emblem. But I'll live with it. Yeah, normally those food tokens plus Trail of Crumbs would be great against control, but on the inversion, doing a lot of work. Primal Might will respond with a... I guess I don't even need to play Kicked necessarily, but might as well. Bounce Mammoth. And then I can cycle another Shark Typhoon and attack for lethal. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Yurion deck. Yeah, this hand's pretty slow, but I do have the combo of Conqueror's Death plus Narset, which could be fun. Although, they might be playing Skyclave Apparition, exiling Narset, in which case we can get it back with Conqueror's Death. So, we'll see. Skyclave Relic can also get exiled. So maybe that baits out the Apparition. This is definitely a matchup where having access to our counter spell is going to be important, so we can maybe play Relic and still have access to it. Hold on to my dual face cards for now. Alright, gets a mountain, so they are playing Jeskai as well. Maybe for Transmogrify to combine with the wall token here. Just gonna be another Omen. Yeah, Omen's definitely a good one if they can ever resolve Yurion. Provide a ton of card advantage. But that's also something we could maybe wipe away with Ondo Inversion. Opponent just plays out Glass Casket, doesn't get rid of my artifacts. So, for now, I guess I'm okay playing Pathway as a red source, so we have more red mana for Ultimatum. And then we'll play Narset. And then I think I just plus. I train in the shadows of the Alright, they do have Luca, so they are playing kind of the Transmogrify package. Maybe Poden playing Dream Trawler here. Nope. Ox of Agonos discards their entire hand. And they had Mystical Dispute, Dream Trawler, a bunch of lands. So, I mean, it is random. They could have also potentially hit a Dream Trawler there. So, I can use Conqueror's Death to exile the Ox so they can't escape it, and then minus Narset to deal with Luca. And I'm assuming it's fine to get rid of my Shatter the Sky here. Suppose if they play Dream Trawler, I might regret getting rid of my Shatter the Sky, but we've got other ways to deal with it. A giant Shark, or just make some Angel Tokens. And then next turn I should be able to cast one of my 7 drops. Could have cast one last turn, of course, by just playing one of them untapped. But exiling the Ox so they can't escape it seemed pretty important. Omen of the Sun. Okay. So... Plus Narsets for blue. Help you and then I'm kind of liking just casting Seagate Restoration here. Mm -hmm. 
sadly don't have a blue land to play untapped for mystical disputes, so I'll just have to play Temple. And do I want another Shark Typhoon? I mean, it's a good card. So, I guess I'll keep it. Although I would also like to add more land drops. They could just hard cast the Yurion that they have in hand, but they don't have enough mana to put this one in hand and cast it. Which is pretty important. And then next turn I can maybe onto inversion, get rid of all their omens. Alright, transmogrify. Finds another ox. So they will be able to escape it. I can feel your anger. I guess I can just dragon fire the ox then, and then we'll have dispute to counter Yurion, and then wait on the Ondo inversion for now. And then what to do with Narsets? I guess I'll just plus here for mana. Can probably afford to pay three here. All right, another transmogrify. Fair enough. This time hits the dream trawler. Can also take a quick peek at their deck. So Ondo Inversion's looking good. Opponent puts Yorion in hand. Probably no need to cycle Shark Typhoon here if I'm gonna blow up the board anyway. And then might as well minus Narset to get an extra card. Sadly, can't keep a blue mana for Mystical Dispute here, but that's okay. Could have decided to plus Narset for mana so I could keep up Mystical Dispute, but now that the Omens are gone, Yurion's not a huge threat anymore. Alright, I guess they have another Omen. Fair enough. That's their last one. Got 38 cards remaining, so not too close to decking. My hand's pretty good. Opponent hard casts Shark Typhoon. I like it. So... I should have two more Ondo Inversions in the deck as well. Which we can maybe dig towards... Shark Typhoon makes a shark whenever the opponent casts a spell, so even if I counter it, they would still get the token. I mean, I could follow suit and just play my own Shark Typhoon. And I do have some pretty big spells I can play afterwards, so I don't hate it. And then for now, I could go Narset into Shark Typhoon or Shark Typhoon keep up Mystical Dispute. Probably better to play Narset after we play Shark Typhoon. And then just keep up double dispute. Alright, Conqueror's Death. Sadly, gonna exile my Typhoon. But not before I can dispute it and make a 3-3 Shark. Is that worth it? Yeah, they can have it. So a little punished for running out Shark Typhoon there. But now if I draw onto Inversion I wouldn't be as sad. So probably don't want to play the second Shark Typhoon now that they can flicker Conqueror's Death with Yorion. Triple Dispute in hand. 
So next turn we'll have to pay the Conqueror's Death Tax, which is going to make it a little bit more difficult to counter anything. They play Yorion. I need to dispute twice. So it's going to cost me 10 mana, which I guess I can pay. And then on the last chapter they get back one of their creatures or planeswalkers, so that's pretty bad for me. So I might be better off just casting ultimatum and digging for onto inversion here. They can exile my relic if they flicker Conqueror's Death, but so be it. Alright, there's onto inversion. Don't have to worry about discarding to hand size thanks to my Seagate Restoration. Birth. So they're still gonna have enough mana to pay for my Mystical Dispute here. Which I can cast through the Conqueror's Death. But they decide to hold on to it, fair enough. So, expensive on the inversion, but definitely worth it here. Opponent can make a token with the castle, Ardenvale, end of turn. Or sacrifice Omen of the Sea, or both. But now they're down to just a single Leorion in hand, and we still have plenty of action. Alright, I do want to keep up some number of counter spells. I guess I can start with Narsets, start plussing. Compassion and understanding above all else. Many paths lie before me. And then I'll just pass, maybe make a big shark. Not sure why my opponent's not using their Castle Ardenvale here. Could start pressuring Narsets. Another Conqueror's Death. This one I will attempt to counter here, even though it's gonna cost me all my disputes. So yeah, Dispute definitely not as good as Neutralize would be in this spot. But in the early turns, it can definitely make the difference. And then we'll just keep plussing. Can play kicked Skyclave Relic. Into Emiria's Call. And then we'll save Shark Typhoon as our big finisher. Luca can plus to find some creatures. Doesn't find any. And Yurion as a 4 5 blocker. But we can easily finish it off with Narset if we want. So, how about we ultimate Narset? Dragonfire Urion, two additional damage from Narset. And then we'll take out Luca. End of turn, make a giant shark. And that should be pretty much game. Alright, maybe not. 
Although they don't have any cards in hand, so they can give the Dream Trawler Hexproof. So I can just bounce it with into the Royal. We've got 15 mana, so that's a 13-13 Shark. And an Inspired Ultimatum to the face should do the job as well. Could have also used Dragonfire to just kill the Dream Trawler, but opponent's dead here. Can attack for 21 and then Inspired Ultimatum for 7 additional damage. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Sadly can't keep this. Only two lands, no blue mana. This is better. And then what do I put on the bottom? Probably Inspired Ultimatum, since we don't have any ramp. Pretty far from casting it. But then we essentially have four lands here. A Conqueror's Death and a Dragonfire. Play a Triumph Tapped to begin with. Probably gonna just play the second Triome on turn 2. Turn 3 we can play Relic, which gives us access to turn 4 Elspeth Conquers Death at the very least. Or we can decide to turn to Dragonfire if needed. Alright, opponents on just a mono green deck so far, but they're probably playing more than one color. Yeah, I guess we can play Temple of Enlightenment. Although I don't know exactly what I'm looking for with the Scry ability just yet, since I don't know what my opponent is up to. So I guess for now I don't mind playing a second Triome. Wouldn't be able to Dragonfire anything, but we keep some of our untapped lands to maybe play a Skyclave Relic on turn 3. Opponent on Black Green with a Lenore Visionary. Alright. So we've got a few options here. We could Dragonfire the Visionary. Not the best exchange. But uh, the Visionary is still pretty decent, so don't mind getting rid of it. Or we can pay 3 life by playing Restoration Untapped, play Relic, although we're not guaranteed to play Conqueror's Death next turn if they ramp into, let's say, an Elder Gargroth, although we could still bounce it with Into the Royal. So for now, I think I'm just going to play Temple Scry, find Emiria's Call, which... You know, it's fine, but I would prefer a land that doesn't cost me 3 life to play untapped. And then we'll just kill the Visionary before it can make extra mana. And then next turn we can play a tap land plus maybe a Skyclave Relic. It's gonna be 4 mana and just a hard cast Murderous Rider. That's not too scary. And yeah, I think I'm okay playing my Skyclave Relic. Playing a Triumph Tapped. And then next turn I can maybe Conqueror's Death. And we're slowly ramping towards our expensive sorceries. Of course, Conqueror's Death a little bit better if we already have a Narset in the graveyard. We'll take two. And there's Elder Gargroth, as expected. So that's a pretty good target for both Into the Royal and Elspeth Conqueror's Death. I guess for now, I don't mind bouncing it with Into the Royal. And I don't think we need to play around any hexproof tricks from my opponent, so I can just do it in the opponent's turn instead. And that will maybe change their play. They might play something main phase 1 and be unable to replay Gergroth. But we do want to bounce it before they get a chance to attack. And I'm totally fine taking another 2 damage. Alright, so we've got a lot of options here. I could 
just cast a Seagate Restoration, draw a ton of cards. I'm gonna take a beating from Gergoroth and Murderous Rider. But then the turn after I'll be very likely to just cast Ondo Inversion to wipe the board. So that's definitely an appealing option. I could just Conquer Death Gergoroth and deal with it to one for one. Take another two from Murder Strider, take it from there. But the extra cards from Restoration here are pretty tempting. Could also play Skyclave Relic with Kicker, but that doesn't really accomplish as much as just drawing a bunch of cards with Restoration, I think. So I have to play my lands. Play it as the red side here in case we draw the Jeskai Ultimatum, but probably doesn't matter too much. So I've got a full grip. Next turn I can go Pathway into Ondo Inversion, so it doesn't matter what else my opponent adds to the board. And then we'll be in pretty good shape. Let's see what they decide to do with Gergroth. And draws a card. And then we're just hoping they add more creatures or permanents to the board that we can destroy with Inversion. And Great Henge, perfect example. A card that's typically great against a control deck, since it can provide card advantage, difficult to remove. But Inversion's just gonna get rid of it. Our opponent actually has a Malachir Rebirth here to save the Gergroth. So that's gonna return to the battlefield. Alright, that's a pretty good one. Wasn't expecting it. So now the Gergroth can hit us once again. All the way down to two. And now they might decide to make a beast. Nope, still draws a card. Innkeeper joins the fun, keeps the cards flowing. And they're looking at their graveyard, so they might have Order of Midnight returning Lovestruck Beast. We need another sweeper here, but it seems like they might have yet another Malachi Rebirth in hand, which is too bad. So what's my plan here? I can Conqueror's Death Gergoroth, Dragonfire the Order so I don't die, maybe ambush Innkeeper with a Typhoon, although I don't know if we have enough mana for that. Yeah, I'm gonna be a little bit short. Can I instead just into the Royal without Kicker on the Gergoroth? Yeah, that might be best. And then Dragonfire the Order, ambush the Innkeeper. Although they will get to draw a bunch of cards. I guess it's better to then kill Innkeeper, Ambush Order, and hope they don't have a Murder Strider. Although if they do, I just lose on the spot. So. Kill Innkeeper. And then, can I afford to play Skyclave Relic? Could maybe opt to hit my Land Drop. And then I can still into the Royal, but then my Shark will only be for one. So I think I got a pass. Bone moves to combats. Bounce Gergroth without kicker. And then I can Typhoon for two to at least trade for the Order of Midnight. But if they have an instant speed removal spell, we're still dead. Could also opt to try and find another Scorching Dragonfire. Maybe that's the play, and then just chump the Order of Midnight. I think I gotta make a 2-2 Shark here to try and trade. But it looks like they have a Murder Strider. Eliminate. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a decent hand. Probably gonna play Inversion tapped on turn one. 
And then we've got Relic and Narsa to both ramp us towards Ultimatum. So that's going to be our game plan. Opponent on red green. Adventure is a Lovestruck Beast. Alright, I'll stick to the plan here. Play Relic. And then we can maybe minus Narsa discarding Shark Typhoon to kill the beast. It's gonna be a Scavenging Ooze instead. And an Innkeeper. Well, Shatter the Sky would be a great draw here. So Narsets can minus to kill the Innkeeper to prevent card draw. But then Narsets gonna die. Could cycle Shark Typhoon for three potentially to try and ambush a creature. Or I can just play a Temple Tapped. So I've got a lot of options. Could also play Narset and plus. And then she wouldn't necessarily die unless my opponent has one more damage somewhere. And then next turn I'll be able to play Ultimatum. So I kind of like plussing over minusing here. And Dragonfire seems fine. So had I minus Narset, I could have maybe discarded Dragonfire to kill Innkeeper, but then Narset would have died. Now I'll be able to hopefully ultimatum, killing either Innkeeper or Beasts. And that's gonna pull us further ahead. Alright, Poden makes the obvious play. And then now I have to decide which creature to kill, Innkeeper to prevent card draw, or Beast to prevent damage. Probably go for the Beast. And it also means that now a Shatter the Sky doesn't draw the opponent a card necessarily. And then discard to hand size. Doesn't seem like a matchup for Mystical Dispute as I'll be tapping out for the most part. So that can go. So Narset down. And we'll see if they add more creatures to the board. Alright, Amber Cleave, not a bad one. They could eat their own beast, and now the Ooze will draw them a card with Shatter the Sky. So if we find Ondo Inversion, that can also get rid of the cleave. For now, we'll just shatter. And Conqueror's Death seems fine. Can exile cleave, get back Narset. And we'll have Dragonfire to maybe kill a creature end of turn. So don't hit my position. Stone Call for five, okay. Probably is going to require another Shatter. But for now, I think I prefer Conqueror's Death to Cleave.
Uh, they had a backup Amber Cleave, unfortunately. I'll hang on to my Shark Typhoon. So I go to Shatter. And then I've got four mana left, five mana if I play Pathway. Probably just play my Temple. And then we don't need more lands. Alright, so the second cleave dealt a lot of damage here. But we still have a lot of action in hand to work with. Next turn we'll get back Narset. Mammoth. I can Dragonfire. Can Dragonfire it in response to a Fable Passage since I can just sacrifice it to fetch another land. So that's the one situation where it doesn't work. But I will be able to Dragonfire this one. Or I can wait for them to equip, but I'll probably just kill both with Narset here. So we'll kill this end of turn. Untap. Another Conqueror's Death is nice. Minus. Just discard Shatter, I guess. Kill Mammoth. And then I can Conqueror's Death to Cleave. Alright. And it's almost time to start making some big flying tokens. Probably wait on the Shark Typhoon for now. Alright, Gem Racer, not bad. Can destroy my Conqueror's Death. So let's minus Narsets. I guess I can play my Temple first. A Relic, not super useful since it only deals 3 damage, so it's not enough to kill the Beasts or the Gem Razor here with Narset. Uh, into the Royal can bound some creatures. So I gotta decide what to discard here to kill the Beast. Probably better off with the Shark Typhoon and just discard Emiria's Call. And then keep up the two instants. Can ambush the token with Shark Typhoon to protect Narset. Start getting a bit of life back. And dig towards more action. Stone Call for 7. Can be bounced by Into the Royal. So... We've got 10 mana, so an 8-8 shark, which is also enough to block Stone Coil unless they can mutate onto it. Another point explodes. Alright, sweet. So we got to play some pretty long, grindy games with our Jeskai Narset control deck. Got to see the power of Onduin version in a lot of different matchups. Of course, the deck's not perfect. Sometimes we're just going to get run over by aggressive decks. Sometimes we're going to face a deck with plenty of counter spells. They just counter our few expensive spells that matter. And then we're left with a bunch of removal that doesn't do much in the matchup. So it's not a perfect best of one deck and can definitely be fine tuned for best of three. There are plenty of card choices and plenty of flex slots. So there's a lot of room to explore as well. But that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.